I have devoted this lecture to the topic of uh, automatic recognition of objects in, in images and the possibility for a, a computerized system to also distinguish between different kinds of objects. And in particular, the application of, of uh, recognition of pedestrians in, in images. And the later application is driven by the, the, the uh, technology development in areas of improvement for, for traffic safety. Uh, the outline of my talk today is that I will firstly show you a couple of example images to convince you the importance about the importance of, of texture and the shape of objects in order for uh, both a human and for a machine to recognize objects and distinguish between them. I will continue to uh, discuss the area of computation of, of image gradients and the use of the well-known Sobel operator. And I will then um, go into uh, the use of descriptors, uh, a compact mathematical descriptor to capture the information from, from texture and shape, both in terms of edge histogram descriptor and the more complex uh, histogram-oriented gradients. But we can start with shape and, and texture of objects, and I will show you an example here. This is an image uh, where I have computed the Sobel operator uh, on the red, uh, blue and green channel separately on a color image and developed this binary <coughs> edge detection image here. And I believe with, that we can agree upon that uh, this object here, it looks pretty much like there is a person standing there in the picture. And yes, indeed it is. We can continue with the, the second example. If you look here, uh, I would say that this object here, uh, considering the shape and also the texture here, it pretty much looked like a giraffe, an animal. And indeed, it was a giraffe. The third example, uh, this one is a little bit more difficult perhaps, but it's still an, an animal. Uh, and if you look at the shape here of the object, as well as also the texture, I would say that this is a tiger. And yes, indeed, it was a white tiger. And for the fourth example, that one is much simpler. I think it is very, very obvious that this is a bird. It is an eagle flying in the sky. So I think that from this very simple experiment, we can conclude that the, the, uh, the shape and the texture of object is the major information that we need from an image in order for a human to detect uh, an object and distinguish between different kinds of objects. So the question arises, uh, how can we possibly develop an, uh, a descriptor, a mathematical compact description that is uh, compact enough and, and provides enough of information in order for a computerized classifier to detect objects and distinguish between different kinds of objects. But I think before we start working on, on creating some kind of, of descriptor, uh, we need to uh, remind ourselves on uh, how the gradients actually are computed using the Sobel operator. The computation of uh, the gradients in the, the X dimension and in the Y dimension is uh, done uh, using convolving uh, with a, a matrix of uh, filter coefficients different filter coefficients uh, for the x dimension and uh, another matrix for the y dimension. But it's a convolving convolution operation that creates uh, this uh, gradient vector that we are, are looking for and the information that we need. And from this vector, we are able to compute uh, the length and the strength of, of this uh, uh, vector as being the, the uh, Euclidean uh, distance, uh, as well as also that we are able to compute the angle being the, the direction of uh, this uh, gradient. We continue by having a, a, a look into this image. 
showing a, a woman standing on, on the, the beach. Uh, we continue by uh, computing the, the uh, gradients, applying the Sobel operator separately on the red, blue and, and green uh, color channels. And we can um, try to analyze how the corresponding gradient vectors would look like. And uh, if you look at the, the gradient vectors that represent the, the uh, exterior shape of the woman here, uh, I think you can imagine that if we are able to create some kind of descriptor, mathematical descriptor, that represents the direction of these gradients, then it should be able to have uh, some kind of representation of, of the object. We continue this work uh, with uh, trying to analyze firstly a, a small local uh, neighborhood of pixels, like this one you see here, and we compute uh, the histogram uh, of the statistical distribution of the orientation of, of the gradients. Um, on the y-axis uh, you see the probability uh, of occurrence and on the x-axis here you see the, the angles of the gradients ranging from 0 to 360 degrees. Uh, the histogram then being an estimation of the probability density function. Um, so we have in this case, kind of, um, we have been able to create a descriptor that is able to capture uh, the texture present in the image uh, and analyze you know, on, a, on a local basis within this local neighborhood. But still, we need to have some additional mechanism in order to be able to, to capture uh, the shape, information of the shape of, of a larger object, since this local neighborhood only uh, involves a small portion of, of the object. So then, how to create a descriptor that can also uh, capture the, the, the shape of, of this, this larger object? So we divide the image into a number of sub-images sub like this, into blocks. And for each one of these blocks, uh, we then compute uh, the corresponding uh, histogram. Um, and since we are, are having a, a, a sequence a num a sequence numbering of each one of these uh, blocks, uh, we then have been able to create a, 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 a spatial coding. So the spatial location of each one of these blocks and the spatial location of the, of the corresponding uh, histogram will then have a, a corresponding position in a final uh, vector that we create on the output. We append each one of these histograms into a larger vector like this, where uh, each position then corresponds to a spatial location in the input image. And in, in such way, we are, we are able to also capture not only the texture on, on a local basis, but also the edges that corresponds to a larger object within a, a larger descriptor. And we continue by feeding this larger descriptor into a computerized classifier. And the classifier should then be able to distinguish between different objects like the human, the rough, the bird, or whatever. But of course, then we need to train this classifier using a large data set of images uh, that, are, that are used for training. And if you if you uh, want to read more about uh, the development of the edge histogram descriptor that was also selected as the descriptor used for, for the MPEG-7 standard, uh, I have selected a couple of scientific references for you that you can read. Uh, the first one also focuses on, on the implementation issues, how to implement the, the computation of such a descriptor in, in hardware on an FPGA platform. Histogram of oriented gradients was uh, it's, it is another technique that was developed by by two scientists uh, publishing this work in, in the year 2005. Their name is uh, Delal and Triggs. You have the reference here to their scientific publication, and they computed a descriptor in a kind of a similar way, uh, starting with with uh, a, a normalization of the gamma and color response of the input image. And they were also computing the image gradient uh, vectors, and they were using weighted votes into to uh, histogram of oriented gradients. And 
and each uh, like one uh, histogram for each one of these cells, which is the smallest unit uh, a collection of, of pixels, a neighborhood of pixels. And uh, weighted vote means that they were using the the, uh, the gradient strength strength such that uh, more salient uh, textures and more salient shape of objects did have a stronger impact on on uh, stronger importance on the voting of the the histograms. And they combined uh, a number of cells. In this case, we have like three by three uh, cells into one block. And within this block, they applied a contrast normalization of the histograms. And uh, they were analyzing the complete image then using uh, 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 a number of overlapping uh, blocks covering the complete uh, detection window. And for each one of these uh, block positions, they were generating a norm contrast normalized uh, histogram. And they were combining all of these histograms into a larger, uh, complete and quite la large uh, uh, hog descriptor. Um, and this uh, large hog descriptor could then be uh, fed into a linear classifier trained by a, a uh, support vector machine algorithm uh, and being able to distinguish uh, between humans and non-humans in, in the image. They made a lot of experiments on trying to find the optimal combination of size of cells and size of, of blocks. In this case uh, we see here that five by fi five pixels has been combined into one cell and one block is built up from uh, three by three uh, cells. And they were using a detection window of 128 by 64 pixels. And uh, the, the normalization of the uh, corresponding uh, uh, hist histograms from each one of these cells are normalized according to this formula into one single um, histogram represented for, for each one of the blocks. And then finally, they they uh, combine uh, and collect, you know, all the hogs corresponding for, from all the, the positions of the windows, uh, all the positions of of the, the blocks, and uh, they built up a, a, a large, complete hog descriptor. And this hog descriptor could then be used as input for the linear classifier. And of course, for achieving these results, they, they needed a, a number of, of images that can be used for training of the, of the classifier and also for the testing of the, of the classifier. So basically what they need is uh, a number of, of images of pedestrians standing in, at different poses and standing in, in different environments and, and so on. And these kind of data sets, they are actually available on, on the web, openly available. This is an example of images taken from a data set provided by the MIT labs in the United States. You find the reference where you can download these images if you would like to have a look at them. Um, and this data set then is a large collection of images. Um, and uh, researchers and also scientists, uh, engineers are using these images as test bench for as a test bench, you know, for comparing the performance of different kinds of dete detection methods. If they want to compare the, the results achieved by, by uh, Dalal and, and Triggs, they want to compare it using the same kind of input data set, then it is good to, to have uh, a standardized way of, of having an input stimuli to your simulations. Um, yeah. Uh, Dalal and Triggs, uh, they uh, claim to achieve the optimal performance of their method uh, at a miss rate of 10% uh, using, a, a f I mean, a, at a false positive per window corresponding to 10 in a power of minus 4. And these results were achieved uh, at a cell size of 4 by 4 pixels and a block size of 2 by 2 cells. Um, the block stride was 8 pixels and the size of the detection window was 128 by 64 pixels. 
And the voting uh, for the histograms was made using nine bins for the local histograms on each one of the cells, using a, a linearly uh, proportional to the, to the gradient strength, which means that uh, the, the stronger the gradients are, the more importance they have to the final voting of, of the histograms. So um, explaining this technique, about uh, how to detect objects in, in images and distinguish between different objects in images. And now finally, how to uh, safely detect if there's a pedestrian uh, present in an image or not. Then for today, I'm, I'm satisfied with this lecture and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you, bye.